The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. Oh, my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday. Dow's down 33, S&P's down uh, one and a half. This is a, a fascinating period for two reasons. One is, there are so, I'm thinking here that there's going to be, just like in January of last year, the Dow and the, uh, what was it, Dow and the New York Stock Exchange made all-time highs in January, actually a number of the indices but then over the period of the year, some of the other indices went to new all-time highs. The New York Stock Exchange never got close. It's still down uh, quite a bit from its all-time high. And I'm thinking we're looking at the same situation here. Look at the E-mini, the uh, S&P E-mini. 2,900 on a daily basis. 2899.75, 25 cents, one, one tick away from uh, the 2,900 on the 8th of uh, April, following days, it hits 2,900 and then drops sharply to 2,877.25. Next day, it has an inside bar, a very nice green candle with a high of 2,896 round number, opens a 2,882 round number. And what does it do? Today, it goes to 2,900 round number high again, and it's pulling back a little bit. But... The MACD is still okay. It's not great, but it's, it is positive. And the stochastics at 92%. That's still good. If you look at the 120-minute chart, you made a double top at a peak C1, C2. Had a question about that. Yeah, that would have been in the daily, except that the, the 27, 26 low of March the 11th, I think it was, 8th, uh, was the starting point. I did have an alternate count, but then it picked up and it went to DE. And this is a peak E. Uh, right at this particular point with three bars that are so far not breaking 2,900. Now, here's the other thing that I think is kind of important, at least in the way I look at things. Look how strong the weekly chart is. So let me get rid of this 120-minute chart with this little double top. Sharp, I don't know what the news was. It was obviously a news-related slide, but it was uh, the market was struggling from early this morning, and we're waiting for tomorrow to start off the bank uh, earnings, and they aren't going to all be the same. So we'll see what happens there. So what I'm looking at is it's going to be quite simple for me. If the E-mini starts to trade at 29.06 and holds there very steadily over the next two days, in other words, Friday and Monday, that's going to be very good for the weekly breakout to the upside. And the next target would be the trend line, Chapman Wave inside wedge target line of 29.20. If there is a pullback and all of a sudden maybe the banks come out and things are kind of good, but uh, maybe they talk it up with the prices, the, the evidence is that they aren't doing all that great this time. That might be a, a sign that we could see some of the financials and the Dow start to pull the market back, et cetera. So um, I just give you parameters. That's all. In the meantime, let's go through this again. Look, the Dow. It's not bad. It hasn't broken under yet. The 14-period experience of moving average in four sessions since the doji candle high. And as I said, we are uh, short the, the Dow. We have a position short. And um, I'm treating this as a shorter-term position because at some point we want to switch to the long side to, get, to garner the strength going to a new leg C and D in the weekly chart. And that monthly chart trying to hit the 26,951 all time high uh, for a test of that. And if you look at this very closely, you'll see that the MACD right at this very second is at zero. So, in other words, the 0% line hasn't crossed negative yet, but it's actually gone right back to the zero line. Stochastic is at 76% for the Dow. That says, be a little careful. That's all it's saying. Be a little careful. Now, I was asked, how can you be long the transports and short the Dow? Remember, we're talking time frames. I'm looking at the transports. I like the action so far. I was expecting a leg C. We've got that today. We've been long for a while in the 185 area. 
It's at 183.64, hit 194.13. I just it's a quick peak C to B, peak B. Sorry, leg A to quick peak B. Cup formation goes to a C with the MACD strong stochastic, really good. Flat at 90%. I love that. So I like this. It's a bifurcated trade. Why? Because you've got to compartmentalize right now. You've got heck, which is just fractions away from another all-time high, which has already done uh, once in the last six weeks, uh, four weeks. And at 40.70, I think it goes higher. You're looking at the SMHs, which are working really hard, but they haven't yet gone two and a half points higher to break 114.55 to make a new all-time high, but they're holding really well. You're looking at the QQQ, which is right now at 187.53 in October, plummets to 23% to 143.46 in December, and now it's back at 185. It had a high today of 185.78, <laughs> less than two points away from the all-time high. But this is exactly, you know, Tom always talks about ice. So this is exactly where we're talking about a previous, especially in V-shaped patterns, a previous left side high in a V-shaped pattern that takes a pretty decent amount of time. In other words, pulls back an X number of bars and then a little longer comes back. So it takes a little longer, but it's still a pretty good V-shaped formation visually. It says that if it takes out decisively the left side high, it can't just hit it and pull back. That's almost like a cup formation that's going to make uh, a cup and handle. I want a Chapman wave, cup and ladle, a V-shaped pattern that just takes out the left side. I want to see 190s in the QQQs before there's a big pullback. I'm not sure yet whether we're going to get that. It seems to me that it's getting a little choppy, a little difficult. If the financials, if the XLF tomorrow has a sharp spike to the upside, it's already in leg uh, B. I just want to double, yep, leg B, uh, gray leg B, because, oh, now I can call it a leg B, a blue leg B. In other words, this is a very good because the MACD is strong, not as anywhere as strong as it was back at this 26th level um, in mid-March, but it is good. And the stochastics finally got to 85%. I like that. And that says I can put an up arrow in. It could fail, but I'm still going to put the up arrow in to say it's a buy mode. Good chance that it will go to somehow or other. It will go above 27 tens in a formation that goes to at least a leg D in the uh, daily chart. Weekly is improving. It's not great, but it is improving. So this is going to be very important. Okay. Uh, before I get to a, a lot of questions that came in, let me just do this. Uh, let's go to the, um, the VIX index. The VIX index right now is trading at 13.31, up a penny. It's still holding. It's in the 12s to 13s, and that says there's buying pressure. The moment it starts to trade, on a closing daily basis in the 1480 to the 1530 level holds that level for a second day and trades in the, in, in the 15s for a second session that's where we start to get a deeper pullback in the Dow and the S&P etc but at this particular point it's just a sideways consolidation we'll come back and then we'll get take, take your questions the Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I was asked to look at VFF, which is Village Farms International. We were looking at it recently at a huge gap up and then it's a spiral from the sevens to a high of 18.10 no, 18 on the 22nd of March. Pulls back is the pattern that you might be familiar with. I call it the uh, lowercase h. It's testing the uh, 1250 low that was made on the 27th. So it comes back, makes an arch formation. My eye suggests that it's got more work cut out for it and that it's probably going to test a 50 period moving average at uh, 11, 80 to 1162. 1162 is the number. So I wouldn't be doing anything right now. I think it's extended. It just needs time. It looks like a biotech uh, stock right now, Village Farms International. Can't remember what it does, um, but that's the way I'm looking at it. And uh, it, even if it bounces, it'll probably make an H to an M pattern. I'm not sure it has the strength in the daily to make the cup formation, but I would not be doing anything right now. I'll look at it again in the next two days. Uh, so that's the way I'm looking at that. Next question I had was, yep, the dollar. Yeah, the dollar, you know, this is just really good action for the dollar considering it's a currency. But if you think about it, it's been going sideways for about one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, about, about 11 months, 10 months. And um, we've been long for a year now from the 90 level. It's hit the 97s twice, three times actually. <clears throat> it's in this consolidation. I just think it's telling us about the U.S. economy, the international perspective on a, on a price basis. And that's the way I'm looking at it. But in the meantime, nice action, not great. I would have preferred to have seen it with gold pulling back so strongly, maybe over 97.22, the high of yesterday. If days young, it could still do that. <laughs> the weekly chart is just consolidating. I, I think the monthly chart still looks very good. Uh, question I had about the uh, EURUSD, the euro dollar currency pair. Nice bounce off the low, but if you look at the weekly chart, this is just pathetic action. I, I don't even know what term to use for the monthly. However, <clears throat> this kind of pattern has a way of fooling you by having a big spiral to the upside and then failing. 
So I'm just going to say right now, until the euro is actually trading for one whole week in the 1.183 area, and I'm talking, I'm not talking about today, I'm talking about over the next two and a half, three months. When it does that, that could be a big change. Um, all right, so that's that. And the USDJ, uh, the Japanese yen, USDJPY currency pair has a nice move up. I'm still anticipating somehow or other it's going to make that missing leg D above the high that was peak C in the weekly chart, the week of the 8th of March at 112.138. I think it goes just above that for leg D. How high it goes after that's going to tell me about the monthly chart. But in the meantime, that was a really good move to test the 200 period moving average yesterday and today have to have a strong candle. It's a start. It needs more. It needs to break above 111.823, the high of the 5th of April, to really start to show it has the tenacity to be able to rally and hold that rally. Next question I had was uh, Disca. Disca. I haven't looked at Disca for a while. Disca. Yeah, this is Disca is Discovery Inc. Services A, char, A shares, peak A, peak B, leg C. Hey, this is looking quite good. 31.80, uh, 31.50 right now, down 10 cents. Uh, if it can hold the 30.20 to 30 support and actually spike, um, if it does it today, that's even better without making a peak at 3134. Uh, that's going to be, no, I can't see how it's going to do that. But in the next two days, if it's able to get above that for a leg D, MACD is strong, stochastic will get even stronger. It's at 80%. Yes, I like this. Like it's in leg D in the weekly chart. So I, I, if you were long, just keep holding it. I'd say on a shorter term basis, I'd have, I, I wouldn't want to see it under 2935. It just text me or email me if you have it under that level and we'll analyze it. But right now, it's holding well. Would I actually buy now? I just don't think so. The Discovery Inc. So, uh, this is the A shares. Yeah, I, I, I think I like its action. Would I buy? Oh, I know what I would do. If, if you have an analysis that you like very much, then I would go in the money, not March. I'd go to March, April. Oh, sorry. We're into April. Not April, but May. I'd go to the May calls because this seems to have a, a move that takes, it goes to a level and it takes a couple of weeks to consolidate. So I'd look at May, but I'd go in the money. I'd be prepared to pay for it, but so much less than actually owning the stock. So I'd be in. I'd, I'd try to get the 30 call. April, I'm sure this is, you're not going to get it, but I'm saying if you can get the 30 call for about 75 cents, I think that's a pretty good deal. Just risk reward with putting very little money up because if this takes it out, all of a sudden you'll be looking at the high that was made back in November, the week of the 9th of 2018 of 34.89. And the MACD in the weekly is just about to cross positive. In fact, it has, but it's not Friday at full. So I have to say it's about it. Okay, next question. I had a bunch of questions. Let's look at platinum. Platinum, I was asked about it. Uh, Ruby says platinum trading range for today is between 880 and 955. Okay, yeah. So platinum is in a leg C, uh, sorry, a peak C in the Chapman wave. The leg B to the upside is... That's a very nice action. This is almost the same pattern that we were looking at discovery, except this did break out to the upside. I like it, but I'd have to have patience to wait. Why? Because it's at peak C. I believe the MACD is strong enough and the stochastic is strong enough that if there was a pullback that held between the nine period moving average of 892 and the 14 period of 883, it just has to dip there once and close positively, and that would suggest to me that platinum would try over the next three days after that to break above the high that was made on the 8th of 920.40, 9 
and I am talking about the uh, uh, continuous contract. So let me just draw the pattern that I'm looking at right now. It's this little mini down channel. Uh, it's more than a down channel. This is a Chapman wave falling axe formation. What you want is maybe a little bit more weakness, and then you want to see two bars that are green that are pushing back in today's open, which was at 906.90. So that's why I'd be looking at that. The, the weekly chart says it could pull back a little deeper. I don't want it to. I'm just saying that these are the levels I'd be looking at. I wouldn't do anything until it pulled back into that range. Oh, it started to show some strength again. Uh, let's just look at this. I was asked about, could I look at soybeans? Soybeans are weak. Wheat plus wheat plus wheat is um, holding quite nicely. And corn, as we go to a break, the Dow's down 47, S&P's down 4. And corn is weak. I'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I, I should mention tonight I am the guest speaker. It just came up real suddenly at the American Association of Individual Investors. Um, this is going to be at the, uh, let me give you the place that it's going to be. It's going to be at the Embassy um, Suites, Boston, Waltham, 550 Winter Street, Waltham. Um, if you, if you, uh, there's a dinner as well, this is a big deal. Um, the two speakers, the first, I'm the first speaker. I come on in registrations at 5.30 and I come on at 5.50 and then dinner's going to be served at 7.05 and then 
Uh, Judy Jason, author, CIO of Jackson Grant Investment Advisors, will be talking about managing retirement wealth, an expert guide to personal portfolio management in good times and bad. I'm going to be talking about the market, where we are, what I'm expecting, and the different um, I'll, I'll use some of the material from my webinar just a week ago, Wednesday, uh, but I'll be, uh, it's for a different audience, so it's going to be focused on um, other things as well that are very important, I consider to be very important. Uh, also, there is, um, there'll be, you, you can use a special code if you want to get a discount just to come and hear that, um, and that is Basil. 2019, and you can whisper it, and you should get a good discount. Um, all right, so uh, that's tonight at uh, 5.30 is registration. I'm talking about 5.50. And so let's go to a couple of things that we're looking at here. The IWM, yesterday at this time, I said, there's a chance that you could, I, I had a caller, and I'm looking so closely now at my IMs. I don't see any callers. I'm just hoping I don't miss out. I didn't expect callers in that first segment, and they were, and I usually do the, my, my preamble, so uh, I, I, I'm just looking out for any caller. I won't let you wait. I know many of you kind of use your lunch hour. You're able to give a quick call, or you're able to call and then listen to the answer because you aren't really able to spend that kind of time on the phone. I appreciate that. I really appreciate you calling. So let me just go back to this. In the IWM, the MACD is good, nothing like it was at the 159.50 high of the 25th of February. And the stochastic is about where it was. No, it's a little lower than it was at that particular point. It's at 89%. That is good. And what I had said, because I had a caller um, and my suspicion was I wanted to know about the Dow, and I, I, I missed that call. The other caller, we were looking at the IWM, and I said, there's a way to play this on a very short-term basis. And what I'd said is, as it was at about 157, I think it was like 157, it was above the high of the previous day of 157.36. I think it was 157.42. And I'd said, there's only one way. You, you, it's a little too late to do anything, but if you want to keep, you want to trade it for the chance to hit that high of, the, of February, then you've got to buy a little bit now. That's all you can do. And just use that as a trade with a trading stop. The other thing I said is you could also use a call position. And in that case, I said an April call. You want it as close as possible. But I believe I was looking at it was in the 157. I might have said 158. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. But the plan was that you would garner whatever gain there is by getting in right now. And any time it pops up, there should be a premium because it's still early in the month. For the actual um, for the option expiration, option expiration will be the third Friday, so that'll be next Friday. So as I'm looking at this, I'm saying, all right, we're now at 157.14, but we've gone to leg E. The 120-minute chart uh, has just had another move to the upside. It had made a peak G. It's just made a peak D. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, is there enough strength? So let me put it this way, because I this is. You don't often get this where there's been such a huge V-shaped shape rally in, in, the, in all of the indices, key indices, and then suddenly a couple of them stall, and they stall quite a bit away from the all-time all highs, and yet a couple just go right to, and just like the XLK, which has just broken out, and uh, even now, down four cents at 76.34 is at an all-time high. This is the move I'm talking about in the V-shaped pattern in the in the weekly chart. V's can be really powerful because you've got no cups in which you've had a moderation of the energy to the upside. So you have to rebuild strength. This is just one continuous. Except if you look at it, you say, wait a minute, 57.57 to 76.56, 11, sorry, 20, almost 20 points in, no, it's 21, it's almost, 20, yeah, it's just over 20 points in almost like a single leg, A to the upside. Yes, there was a little bit of a pullback back in the week of the 22nd of March, 75.25 was the high next month, and next week, 74.11 was the high, and then, boom, gaps up and breaks out. So you can tell 
that we, it's not going to take much for the market to take a little bit of a breather right now, preparing itself for the for another a move to the upside, but maybe needing time, maybe not price, but time at least to the downside. So I'm saying that if you had any profits in that IWM for the option, you should have had a pretty decent profit at the end of the day. It's pulled back. Now it's probably just a little underwater. If you want to keep it, that's okay. I would be trading it. I would actually get out of it. If I haven't taken some profits, I'd be out of it. I'd wait for another opportunity. Saying, number one, I've really got a good feeling now for the, for the way I could use options on the IWM. Uh, let me just do this again. Let me just give you IWM right now. I, I, I've got, I'm getting a feel for it. I did have a profit. I've given some of it back. If you're on the on the short term position that I said yesterday you could get, just have a stop in. What was the low today? The low today is 156.81, 156. So you in it 156.40. I'll make it. Give yourself a 40 cents or something like that stop. That's pretty reasonable for a trade. And see what happens because there's still some strength in the IWM. Um, even though the Dow is uh, down 39 points and the s and is down three, IWM is holding pretty nicely. Okay. Um, now, being in leg E, I'm going to be doing my analysis, and there's a chance that tomorrow, by the end of the day today, or maybe even tomorrow, so that I do work on the weekend, suddenly I'm looking at this and I say, you know, there's enough evidence here to say that the IWM needs a, a respite from this big move up. And um, it could pull back, but you've got a whole bunch of support levels at 155, 155, 95 is nine period moving average, 155, 41, 14 period moving average breaks under it. You've got 153, 43. So there are tremendous support levels for the IWM if we go into consolidation. Let's say it lasts uh, two weeks. All right. Hey, wait a minute. The um, question I had was the IYC, which I haven't looked at for a little while. I always mention this, just forgot to go to it. Yeah, what is this? Was that a Chapman Wave instant restart? Is this only a leg B to the upside? Or is this a continuation of the MACD up, stochastic at 96%, and this is now a leg F, and we're getting really close to a pullback. Wow. <laughs> I asked the question. I don't know the answer, but I can tell you this. The IYC, which is the U.S. Consumer Services ETF, has Amazon, Comcast, Disney, Home Depot, Netflix, all bunch, McDonald's, Walmart, Starbucks. We'll talk about it as soon as I get back, because this is, look at that weekly, it's in leg deep, but what a nice, strong pattern. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger, Missions Hour. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back. I just want to get this right here. So this is A, B, this is in C. Okay, this is a telecon I IYZ. I was asked about that. I thought I'd get to it quickly because I, I'm i looking at this and I always feel a little embarrassed uh, ever since the early April when I looked at it and I said, you know what? Here it is three months later and the telecommunication ETF and some of these telecom stocks have done really well. And I was saying I just didn't want to have capital risk. I don't mind getting the dividend if there's just a very minor capital risk. I want to see capital gains. Miss this whole move because if you go to a Verizon, uh, look at that, for three months from the low that, well, for, take it from February. Just February alone, it's gone from 52 to the 61 area. Uh, telephone, we were talking about that the other day. Telephone has had an even nicer move. It's gone from the low in December, just under 27 to 32 just recently. So you got your three months, and um, that's really what I was looking for. If you look at CVX, I'm just doing dividends now, CVX also has done really well. So this is the first time that I can say, you know what, the past three months have been fantastic, even for the dividend stocks. Because you want capital gain and a dividend. That's fantastic appreciation. So thank you for pointing out the IYZ. Yeah, the IYZ is holding very nicely. And uh, I still have a fear about the telecommunications that a Google or an Amazon or someone's going to come in and they're just going to smack that whole area of telecommunications. I know that I keep cutting back as much as I can on the bills, although I still have a security of a different network in case I go down because you just can't afford to go down. Um, so I always have that backup. But yeah, this is, uh, let me say, this is A right there. So yeah, legs C, this is very nice action. The IYZ uh, trading at 30.65 up down four cents. I would say that this whole area between uh, the 31s, which I could maybe test, and the 2930s, which is the 200 period moving average of the weekly chart, that could be a consolidation if there's a consolidation. So I definitely, for, for myself and certainly for my subscribers, I didn't, uh, I didn't get that. Uh, it was a really nice lift off. I saw it happening, but my concern, my fundamental concern was wrong, ill-conceived, because I was saying, you know, I, people are just cutting back like crazy. A whole article in Consumer Reports again, so like the second one in a year on how to cut your cable bill. So, yeah, things are happening. All right. So here we go. I, uh, I want you to talk about, where was it? Just to show you crude oil. Crude oil de Ville is trading at 63.49. Fabulous move. What did it do? It went right to the 200 period moving average. 65.09 was that high. And this high, the continuous contract went to 64.79. So now you can see some kind of a pullback. Uh, it doesn't have to be big, uh, but it could be a pullback. Um, 
How does it relate to the market? Well, I happen to like crude oil moving up with the market. It's just a good sign. High-grade copper is not really doing that, that well. It's trying its best. It's at a high-level consolidation, trading at 2.89. So pretty about that. And wood, which is the ISHA's timber and forestry ETF, is just kind of stuck. It had a good rally off the low of 55.06, went to the 66s, and now it's trading at 65.14. So uh, we're going to be watching that. Question I had, um, is there a low-grade copper? I don't know why they call it high-grade copper, but they have a reason for it, and uh, maybe that's because the price is high. I don't know. Um, now, this is going to be important for me. Look, the XLE, this is something you can't ignore. It's had, this is just a textbook case in the Chapman Wave methodology. I've got to write that down. I'll write it down. Oops, no, you can't write it with your pointer. Write it down here. XLE example of weekly A to E. Quickly. Yeah. I, I mean, once you got to that leg A, from the low that was made in the XLE, the, this is the SB Select Energy Sprite ETF. Look at that. 5336. And then it goes green bar, green candle weekly, green candle pulls back from the 14 period moving average at 63.89. Just one bar, one week. And then it goes, makes a new high, a recovery high. 65.27 on the week of the 1st of Feb. Whoops, it pulls back for a fraction. Next week, the 8th pulls back, peak B. Leg C starts one penny over peak B. So you've got a leg C. That was two bars, and you get a doji candle at 66.93. One bar down, then it tried, and then it took actually three bars to make a leg D, the fourth bar. Pulls back for one bar, and the last two weeks of making higher highs. So, and But look, to get to an E, this is really quick, and this inevitably says, be a little careful because within the context of the Chapman Wave form, getting to a BCDE very quickly suggests that there could be not a big, a big massive pullback, but it says there could be a pullback of some consequence, and it could be time more than price, but be careful. And that says the 65... 80 to 60, yeah, the 65s would be a short-term target if there's going to be a pullback. There's no absolute direct correlation between, look at the charts, look at this, look at the middle chart, that's XLE, and look at the crude oil. There's no absolute direct relationship, but there's a, sometimes a directional relationship. And you've also got your one-to-one -to, -one to the upside in this Chapman Way propeller shaft formation, and that says that crude oil should try to test 62s over the coming few days. Let's call it a week. It repelled at the 200 period moving average after a fabulous move from 42.60 to the 65. This is a continuous contract, 64.79 area. Nice. Steel. I'm watching steel closely. Steel is getting hammered. Made a high of 42.28 the SLX. I featured this in my webinar saying this is what we're going to keep our eye on. No position, but we're keeping our eye on it for both in economic reasons geopolitical reasons, and price point reasons. So it makes a peak D at 42.28 on the 8th of um, April, and it's now trading at 40.49, 35% pullback, but that was a leg C in the weekly chart, and it's just breaking now the 200 period moving average, and that's suggesting that still, that steel still has a little way to go. Oh, yeah, question about silver. I don't think I did silver at all today. Oh, ugly candle. I said yesterday I just didn't like the look of silver. That gold uh, looked like it was okay, but nothing great. But silver looked terrible. Today it looks much worse than terrible. Ugly. It looks ugly. Um, question I had about um, one of my one of my uh, emailers who sends me a lot of a lot of uh, posts um, as must be taking the day off. Um, so okay, a question and I. I'm going to be dealing with this a lot, uh, certainly for my subscribers. Over the coming year, after the webinar I gave, there were certain aspects that I was looking at. And the question keeps coming up, not just because of subscribers. I keep asking it almost every hour of the day. What are the implications for the very long term? Let's just say that we're going to go above 27,000 this year. 
into the 28,000. Just imagine that scenario. It doesn't have to be. I'm just saying imagine that scenario. If you bought the Dow right now at 26,000 and you were prepared for a 2,000 pullback because if it goes higher and it goes over the 27,000 level, it's going to be that 2,000 plus plus, and then it's in a mega bull market, it could go even higher. What's your risk? What's your reward? I'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Well, folks, we're back. Don't forget Steve, Dave, Tom, coming up after my show. And I'll be back tomorrow. I'd like to see some of you tonight. Come and say hello if you're going to be there. That's at the Embassy Suites, uh, Boston Waltham. It's the uh, American... The, uh, this is actually, a, it's a really wonderful organization, American Association of Individual Investors. I'm a guest speaker. I'll be doing the first talk, and that's the talk at 10 to 6. And uh, I don't believe there are enough, there are, uh, it's too late, I think, to actually have dinner there. But uh, if you want to just listen to the program, you can get a discount. You can use code BASIL2019. Okay. So uh, a little bounce in the Dow right now. So a couple of things I will deal over the next three, four weeks. We're going to be three, four days. We're going to look at, at bigger strategies, looking at monthly charts um, and, and how any pullback could be a buying opportunity. What do you want to do? Where are the levels to look at, et cetera. But in the meantime, um, Goldman Sachs is kind of important. I don't know if when do they give their earnings? Is it tomorrow or next week? Uh, they're trading at 202. I want to see Goldman on fire. I want to see this Chapman Wave Stalk Lake formation a spike into the 210s. It's at 202.75 right now. Within a week or two, because if it pulls back and it has a longer digestive phase, it's saying 
the financials maybe just are not quite ready yet, but there, there are a bunch of clues we can look for. So we're about to sign off, and I don't want to promise my uh, uh, engineer that I will not talk right through the next uh, commercial. So here we go. The Dow's down 41. The S&P is minus one. Maybe there's just a kind of a holding pattern until earnings or the banks come out tomorrow. But most importantly, by Monday's trading, Monday, if the Dow is under 26,950, that says consolidation is going to impact most of the other indices. If the Dow is at 26, uh, 290 to 26, 320, that's going to say, hey, we might have survived this little consolidation. The IWM could now go to, uh, it's, uh, to try to retrace to the level we were talking about uh, a few minutes ago. And you've got the QQQ is just under the all-time highs, SMH is under the all-time highs. Maybe next week's the week that they try for it. So this is a very important stage. Hey, I hear the music. I'm going to sign off right now while the going's good. Have a wonderful day. As I said, I hope to see you, some of you tonight in Waltham at the Embassy Suites for the AAII meeting. And uh, it's a big dinner. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Otherwise, check out my opening call, my newsletter, some nice positions there. Be back tomorrow.